When something like this happens. Flight 1282 had just taken off from Portland, Oregon, when a section of its cabin ripped off. A boy and his mother were sitting in that row, and his shirt was sucked off him and out of the plane. What the pilots say and do in that moment becomes critical, not just for the safety of everyone on board, but also for the investigation that comes afterwards into what the heck just happened. However, in the case of Alaska Air Flight 1282, when a door plug blew off, creating this gaping hole in the side of a moving plane, we may never know. A cockpit voice recorder, or CVR, is exactly what it sounds like. It records everything going on within the cockpit of a plane. So we're talking pilot conversations, radio transmissions, noise alerts on the flight deck, all of which can be key information for a safety investigation. But when investigators went to retrieve the CVR from this Alaska Airlines plane, they were a few minutes too late. The maintenance team went out to get it, uh, but it was right at about the two hour mark. The two hour mark, that's when you hit a wall, at least in North America, because these cockpit recorders are on a rolling two hour loop. You're always overwriting old data. So we have nothing from the CVR. Yeah. By the time they checked, the voice recorder had already been completely overwritten. All cockpit audio from this incident is already gone. But, you might ask, didn't this all happen within like 30 minutes from takeoff to touchdown? We just depressurized. I said to maintain 10,000. I would need to return back to Portland. Like, there wasn't more than two hours of material to record in the first place. Well, yes. And if this had been a crash, the recording would have stopped automatically. But since the plane landed safely, and these recordings are programmed to keep going as long as the plane stays on, in this case, it just kept looping, wiping out all of the moments that actually mattered. When this aircraft ended up on the ground, what should have happened is somebody stopped that recording. If they don't do that, then the recording will continue for as long as the aircraft's got power on. And I think in this case, sadly, by the time they got to it, it had recorded over the event. Two hours is the maximum cockpit recording time on all American and Canadian planes. And even that's a fairly new requirement. Some older planes only record the last 30 minutes. But this is not the international standard. In Europe and many other countries, the rolling record is 25 hours long. That's a huge difference. And a 25 hour limit in this case would mean they'd not only have a recording of this entire ordeal, but of any other recent flights this particular plane had taken. You may have warnings that, that come up in previous flights. That'd be really, really useful. That information is key, not just for our investigation, but for improving aviation safety. Now, if the chair of the NTSB sounds a bit frustrated there, it's probably because this is not the first time she and her colleagues have been missing this piece of the puzzle. Since 2018, we've done 10 investigations where the CVR was overridden. That's 10 investigations in five years where no audio from the cockpit was recovered. And let's be clear, these aren't small incidents. They often make headlines. With 140 people on board, an Air Canada flight nearly lands into four other jets on the ground, coming within meters of a crash. That Air Canada plane almost landed on a taxiway instead of the runway it was supposed to land on. Those planes on the ground were full of fuel and passengers. Where's this guy going? He's on the taxiway. This United One, Air Canada flew directly over us. Yeah, I saw that guy. Now, luckily, the pilot realized in the nick of time and readjusted, but the investigation found pilot fatigue was part of the problem. With the crew in question, the experienced captain flew to New York and back the night before the incident, telling investigators that threw off his sleep cycle a bit. But here's the thing, the National Transportation Safety Board says it never got a full picture of what happened. The pilots and crew were slow to report the incident, and the cockpit recording had been overwritten. In its report, the NTSB said CVR information, if it had been available, could have provided direct evidence about the events leading to the overflight and the go-around. Without CVR information, the NTSB could not determine whether distraction, 
workload and or other factors contributed to these failures. And consider those times when pilots don't even agree to talk. Just last year, after an American Airlines jet had a close call in New York, federal investigators in the U.S. actually had to issue subpoenas to force the pilots to give statements because they had refused three times. Again, the cockpit voice recorder in that incident had been overridden. The NTSB has many times talked about the need to uh, increase the time on CVRs from two hours to 25 hours, which is consistent with Europe and many other countries. So the question then becomes, why are we in this situation? Like, why has it been so difficult to make what seems like, on the surface, a pretty simple common sense change? Well, the first issue is money. Estimates vary, depending on who you talk to, but according to the FAA, it would cost about $741 million to retrofit all planes in circulation in the US with this 25-hour recording limit, and that's just the equipment cost. If you factor in the downtime of all those planes being fixed and the labor involved, the cost would go even higher. In aviation, it seems that anything that we do that's technical can be incredibly expensive. It's not the same as just getting a, you know, a longer tape and, and hoping you can report, record more. There's, there's a lot more to it. But there is another interesting consideration beyond just money, and that's privacy. I mean, think about it. If you were recorded every word that you said in your workplace, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that that would be intrusive to your privacy as, a, as an individual and as a citizen. Pilots consider the cockpit their workplace. According to Reuters, in December, the union representing pilots for the freight company Atlas Air said this change to a 25-hour limit would significantly infringe upon the privacy rights of pilots and other flight crew members as well as drastically increase the likelihood that CVR recordings will be misused or disseminated without authorization. You start talking about, you know, are you going to use cockpit voice recorders as an administrative tool, the airline, to uh, check on the actions of your pilots. The NTSB has insisted that these recordings would only ever be used for safety purposes and that it's illegal for them to be made public. But critics say aviation investigations tend to happen wherever the plane lands and not all international rules or conventions are the same. The laws within Canada or the laws within the United States, they might be quite strong, but if you go to a different country and there's an accident, now this the, the possibility of misuse of the voice recorder uh, occurs. So where does that leave us? Well, the FAA does have a proposed rule change under review, which would increase the length of these recordings to 25 hours, and it's likely Canada would follow suit. But if you read closely, the proposed change would affect all newly manufactured aircraft, new planes only which means for all the existing planes out there, some of which may still have a lifespan of up to 40, maybe 50 years at the extreme end, two hours of cockpit recording will still be the norm. 